And a happy finally Friday. The Mariners have made a big splash before the trade deadline. We'll get more on that coming up in a moment. First of all, the Seahawks have locked up a safety for the next three years. Seattle signed Julian Love to a three-year extension worth $36 million. Love says he's happy to continue playing for the team that helped make him a pro bowler a season ago. It's exciting. Uh, obviously, security for me and my family. Um, and just, you know, belief. Uh, the program has belief in me. Uh, I'm excited to just be here long term. You know, this process in the past hasn't been the best for me. And so, you know, from John down, all the guys, uh, they just were so professional. And I really appreciated how they handled it all. And I just, you know, was around. I wanted to be here, build the team up. We have a new staff. And so I just had to do my part. Uh, and it was very natural. It's big time. Obviously, it's trust. You feel good when, you know, the guy you're playing for trusts you and believes in you. Uh, and from an early point, I know I talked to you guys a while ago, we, we hit it off. I think we connect in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm familiar with how he calls games uh, in his past, and he's just a good guy to talk to and be around. And so I think we just connected, and I'm excited to play for him and to obviously now earn what I uh, have going forward. Seahawks coach Mike McDonald says he's glad to get a player like Julian Love signed for an extended period, considering what he brings to the team. I like a lot about his game. Uh, just really excited for him. Uh, just, it's a, I think it's a shout out to him and the type of person that he is, uh, type of football player. Uh, definitely the type of guy that you know we want here, and um, just excited for him. He's, you know, he's worked his tail off, and um, hopefully he's found a home here in Seattle for a long time. You know, Julian's a guy that'll shoot you straight and hit you between the eyes on stuff, and, and you respect that. And um, has a great perspective on, you know, what he's been through, uh, what he expects, you know, temperature from the from the locker room, can translate some of the messaging. But, uh, at, you know, I'd say that in addition to being a great football player. So, um, you know, he's, we're excited that it's, it's working out and it'll be here. Besides improving on defense, Seattle looks to play better along the offensive line. Ten-year guard Lakin Tomlinson was brought in from the Jets as a free agent to do just that. When I was a rookie, I didn't know what I didn't know. So um, I came in when I was young, asked a bunch of questions, and, you know, I find myself answering a lot of questions uh, at this point in my career. No, but, um, you know, it's, it's just different. The preparation, you know, uh, the knowledge of what to expect, the experience, you know, from all of it, um, you know, it definitely plays a role when they're coming out of training camp this year for me. Uh, Coach talks about the tempo. Um, obviously, having that as a weapon is offense. You know, uh, when, you know, obviously, you want to have good tempo coming in and out of huddle, you know, be crisp, uh, pay attention to details. Uh, but it's extremely important, especially for the offense, you know, getting what we need to get done. That kind of rolled over from, you know, OTAs. You know, I was here in OTAs and uh, going through minicamp. It just kind of rolled over. That's that expectation, you know, that we have for our work. You know, we took, take a lot of pride in our work. And, uh, you know, when Coach goes out there and talk, man, we listen. So uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. Seattle's preparing for its first preseason game ju now just 15 days away in L.A. against the Chargers. Well, the Mariners have made the first big trade in Major League Baseball before the deadline next week. Seattle traded two prospects and a player to be named to acquire Tampa Bay All-Star Randy Arozarena. The Mariners hope his hot bats will help ignite their struggling offense. Meanwhile, the uh, Mariners are in Chicago to take on the White Sox, coming off of being swept by the Rangers, have the worst record in baseball at 27 and 78. George Kirby getting the start against Chicago's Drew Thorpe. That first uh, pitch already happened. It's underway on Root Sports Northwest. Texas said Chicago last night 2 to 1 while Oakland beat the A Angels 6 to 5. Seattle trails Houston by a game in the American League West standings while Texas is two and a half games back. The Angels linger eight and a half games back of the Astros. The Wenatchee Apple Sox managed only five hits, but it was enough to beat Kamloops last night, 5-4 to four in West Coast League Baseball. Apple Sox broadcaster Joel Norman tells us how Brady Bean's bases loaded sacrifice fly in the bottom of the eighth inning was the difference last night. Well, it wasn't exactly the most pretty way of doing it, but the Apple Sox found a way to defeat the Kamloops North Paws with a 5-4 to four triumph on Thursday night at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium to earn their 10th series victory of the summer. Wenatchee rallied back from a 4-2 to two deficit 
deficit by scoring three times over the seventh and eighth innings by only collecting one base hit in that time. Four walks by North Paws pitching as well as one error helped the Apple Sox to come back late and get the victory. James Castagnola had one of the more productive nights for Wenatchee at the plate, collecting two hits, including his second home run of the season, both of which came in the three-game set against the North Paws. On the bump, Caleb Costa won a season-high five innings. He only surrendered a few runs in that time, keeping the game pretty close. And then Andrew Monson gave up one run in the seventh, but he retired the side in order in the eighth and ninth innings to move into a tie for the team lead and the West Coast League lead with his fifth victory of the summer. And now Wenatchee is on the road. They'll take on the Edmonton Riverhawks on Friday night, 6.05 local time, and the first game of a three-game set against the team who defeated them two of three times just a few weeks ago here. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joe Norman. Looks like the air quality has improved dramatically since earlier in the week in Edmonton, where the Apple Sox hope to play first of three games over the weekend tonight. Game time at 7.05. You can listen for the broadcast on Sunny FM. Other West Coast League action last night. Bellingham beat Kelowna 6-4. Walla Walla shut out Yakima Valley 4-zip. Ben edge Cowlitz 5-4. Corvallis completed a sweep of Ridgefield 12-3. Portland down Springfield 3-1. Port Angeles won a non-league game against the Everett Mercury. 7-3. Wenatchee's lead in the North Division's second half standings remains a game over Bellingham. Nanaimo is two games back at 8-7. and seven. Three teams are three games back at 7-8, and eight, including Victoria, Port Angeles, and Edmonton. Portland has jumped to first in the West Coast League South Division at 14-3. Ridgefield is a half game back at 13-3. Corvallis and Bend are all three games back. That's a look at sports news. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.